The Yarn of the Nancy Bell by W. S. Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Ben Cochiaro, July twenty second, two thousand eight, State College, Pennsylvania. Twas on the shores that round our coast, from Deal to Ramsgate span, that I found alone on a piece of stone an elderly naval man. His hair was weedy, his beard was long, and weedy and long was he. And I heard this white on the shore recite in a singular minor key. Oh, I am the cook and the captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and the boatswain tight in the midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. And he shook his fists and he tore his hair till I really felt afraid, for I couldn't help thinking the man had been drinking, and so I simply said, Oh, elderly man, it's little I know of the duties of the men of the sea, but I'll eat my hand if I understand how you can possibly be. At once a cook and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and a boatswain tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. Then he gave a hitch to his trousers, which is a trick all seamen larn, and having got rid of a thumpin' quid, he spun this painful yarn. "'Twas in the good ship Nancy Bell that we sailed to the Indian Sea, and there on a reef we come to grief, which has often occurred to me. And pretty nigh all the crew was drowned, there was seventy-seven a soul, and only ten of the Nancy's men said here to the muster roll. There was me, and the cook, and the captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and the boatswain tight, and the midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. For a month we'd neither whittles nor drink, till a hungry we did feel, so we drawed a lot, and a cordon shot the captain for our meal. The next lot fell to the Nancy's mate, and a delicate dish he made, then our appetite with the midship might we seven survivors stayed. And then we murdered the boatswain tight, and he much resembled pig. Then we whittled free, did the cook and me, on the crew of the captain's gig. Then only the cook and me was left, and the delicate question, Which of us two goes to the kettle arose? And we argued it out as sitch. For I loved the cook as a brother I did, and the cook he worshipped me. But we'd both be blowed if we'd either be stowed in the other chap's hold you see. I'll be eat if he dines off me, says Tom. Yes, that, says I, you'll be. I'm boiled if I die, my friend, quoth I. And exactly so, quoth he. Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do. For don't you see that you can't cook me? Well, I can and will cook you. So he boils the water and takes the salt and pepper in portions true, which he never forgot and some chopped shallot, and some sage, and parsley, too. "'Come here,' says he, with proper pride, which his smiling features tell. "'Twill soothing be, if I let you see, how extremely nice you'll smell.' And he stirred it round and round and round, and he sniffed at the foam and froth, when I ups with his heels, and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. And I eat that cook in a week or less, and, as I eating be, the last of his chops, why, I almost drops, for a wessel in sight I see. And I never grin, and I never smile, and I never larf nor play, but I sit and croak, and a single joke I have, which is to say, Oh, I am the cook and the captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy brig, and the boatswain tight and the midship might, and the crew of the captain's gig. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.